Leisure travel was always part of the railway psyche from the very start. It really democratised travel, opened up the country for people. The rail connections that we used to have to get to Seaside are still there and you can still take a holiday by train. Pre-railway, in the 18th century, there was already uh, a desire to um, go to the seaside for health benefits, so sea bathing, sea air. To get there back then, you would have to be the middle classes because carriage rides were expensive. The coming of the railways signalled um, an industrial, social, economic revolution. And with the rising wage, um, as the railways were growing, it meant people had more disposable income. They wanted more opportunities to, to do things like holidays. In the early days, first and second class, you know, you had upholstered seats, you had heating, you had uh, lamps so you could see it when it was dusk. Whereas third class, originally, it was just a cart without a roof. After the 1870s, that kind of improved a lot for the, for the third classes. And, and that was really pioneered by the Midland Railway who introduced their Pullman service. So they introduced um, refreshments, dining on the trains, toilets, hot water. If you were taking your family in, in the 1890s, the railways would put on cheap excursion tickets. So all but the poorest, the very poorest of society could afford to get on the train and, and go to the seaside. I think it would have been quite exciting actually for those people who you know, don't get that much time off work um, and they're leaving their factory work, their inner cities to the green of the countryside and then to the, the blues and, and the golds of the coasts. At the heart of the network we have our, our major stations and in the bank holiday period it, they would have been bustling kind of electric places to be. As an example we have the 1899 August bank holiday where between the Friday and the Monday over 700,000 tickets were sold and back then that was the population of Glasgow so you would when you put that in context that's a huge amount of movement in our core London stations. Everybody leaves very busy lives now and the idea of being able to get on a platform, step onto a train and, and be transported away from your day-to-day -day life without having to make much of a you know much of an effort is attractive to a lot of people now and actually the connections on the network are still there to do that. <laughs>